Hi, everybody. So I wanted to um, do an example of a definition uh, from linear algebra. It's a course uh, you've probably all taken. And I want to look at maybe the most important definition in that entire subject and analyze its structure uh, in the context of some of the in, uh, interesting perspectives we've gained on logic and so forth. Uh, because it's an interesting definition in the way it's put together. So here it is. This is the definition of a linearly independent set. So a set uh, of vectors, v1 up to vn, is called linearly independent if for any other set, a1 up to an of scalars, if the sum from 1 to n of ai vi equals 0, then ai equals 0 for all i from 1 up to n. And if you're not linearly independent, then you're called linearly dependent. But let's focus our attention here on the first part of this definition and, and analyze it a little bit. So remember that a definition is a kind of an if and only if statement. Uh, on the one side of the if and only if statement is the thing being defined. So the thing being defined here is when is a set linearly independent. So on the left hand side of our if and only if, we have that a set v1 up to vn is linearly independent that's a statement and that is equivalent to the following statement for any set of scalars such that the sum of a i v i equals 0, we have a i equals 0. So here i goes from 1 to n, and here i goes from 1 to n. And the interesting thing about this definition is that this part is an if-then, because we could really write it as saying if sum a i v i equals 0, then all a i equals 0. In other words, the logical structure, if we call these various statements, we call the hypothesis maybe p, and we call sum of a i v i equals 0 q, and we call all a i equals 0 r, then our definition has the form p if and only if q implies r. And if you think for a minute about this, first of all, remember that an if and only if statement is true provided the two sides are either both true or both false. So um, that says that you are linearly independent if Q implies R, and you are not linearly independent if it's false that Q implies R. Okay? So linearly independent true, so the, this compound statement is true, provided that the two things that happen are you are linearly independent and Q implies R, or you're not linearly independent, and that's not, it's the wrong kind of Q. You, you're not linearly independent, and therefore it's false that Q implies R. So how do, you, how do you apply such a thing? Well, um, let's look at two very, very simple theorems where we're forced to apply the definition and see if we can figure out what's going on. You've probably seen this in linear algebra, but now I want you to look at it through the lens of our discussion of, of, uh, of proving theorems and so forth. So we have here a theorem. The set of vectors 1, 3, 2, 2 is linearly independent in R2. And we need to prove this. Essentially, we have to see if the definition of linear independence applies to this set. So um, how do we do that? Well, we need to know, in this case, we are linearly independent, provided that this if-then holds. So we need to know, we must show, 
that. The sum, let me write it out this way. A1 times 1, 3 plus A2 times 2, 2. That's the sum AIVI equals 0 implies that A1 equals 0 and A2 equals 0. Because if this implication here is true, then the definition applies and it is linearly independent set. So now, how do you deal with an implication like this? Well, as usual, there are two cases. The first could be true. The, this is the P and this is the Q. The P could be true or false. If the P is false, meaning A1 times 1, 3 plus A2 times 2, 2 is not 0, then this is automatically true. So the only case that's interesting is when A1 times 1, 3 plus A2 times 2, 2 is equal to 0. And we want to see in that case that it forces A1 equals 0 to be A2 equals 0. And so we can assume A1 times 1, 3 plus A2 times 2, 2 equals 0. The use of the word assume here is saying uh, if it's not the case, then we are already done. We've already settled the truth of the implication. So let's take the hard case and assume that it's true, that the left-hand side of the implication is true. And now we do some algebra, and we get that A1, 3A1, plus 2A2, 2A2 is 0. Or A1 plus 2A2, 3a1 plus 2a2 is 0. And a vector is 0 if and only if its two components are 0. So this gives us this set of equations, a1 plus 2a2 equals 0, and 3a1 plus 2a2 equals 0. And I will not do the algebra here, but, and so, but if you have any questions about it, you should make sure that you do it yourself. Uh, well, actually, why don't I just do the algebra? If we subtract the first, the second equation from, take the first equation minus the second equation, we get 2a1 equals 0. So a1 equals 0. And then we get the 2a2 equals 0. So a2 equals 0. So we've shown that a1 and a2 are both 0. So we've shown that if p is true, then q is true, and therefore, the set is linearly independent. Okay, so the definition has this embedded implication in it. And in order to settle that, we have to take the hypothesis of the embedded implication and show that it implies the conclusion. Let's look now at a case where it's, they're not linearly independent, they're linearly dependent. So this is the situation. Here we, have, we want to prove this. And here we must show that the sum of AIVI equals 0 implies all AI equals 0 is false. Because not linearly independent means that the P implies Q on the other side back here. Not linearly independent means this if then is false. How can, under what conditions is an if then false? So let's call this here P and Q for the moment. So P implies Q is false if It can happen, for example, that P is true only if, if and only if, P is true and Q is false. You can remember that from our truth table. The truth table for P implies Q, this is only false when this is true and this is false. In the other cases, it's all true. 
So we need to see if we can find a situation for these vectors in which p is true, so that means that the sum of a i v i is zero, and q is false. Not all a i are zero. Well, so again, we, we, we take the truth of p, so we take a1 times 1, 1, 1, plus a2 times 2, 2, 2, plus a3 times 1, 3, 2, equals 0. And now we do some algebra, and we get a1 plus 2a2 plus a3, a1 plus 2a2 plus 3a3, a1 plus 2a2 plus 2a3 equals 0. So this is the p part, and we're assuming that p is true. What we want to know is, could it happen that q is false? And if you look here, if we take a1 to be 2, a2 to be minus 1, and a3 to be 0, then each of these terms is 0. And not all of the AIs are 0, because A1 is 2 and A2 is minus 1. So we've shown, we've found, we've shown here that the vectors are linearly dependent. They're not linearly independent. Notice that we only had to find one example. So in the previous case where we're proving that it, they are linearly independent, we have to show that no matter which a's you pick, there, there's no way to get zero unless both a's are zero. Here, we just have to find one example of some a's where the sum is zero but the a's are not zero to make this implication false. So uh, there's a little bit of uh, a blast from the past, take you back to your linear algebra days, um, and uh, we'll move on from here.